Hello, welcome back to another video or welcome if you're new here. My name's Alex, my pronouns are he, him, and this is my channel Pucks and Paperbacks where I talk all about queer books. And today I am sharing with you my March wrap up. I ended up reading 12 books in March and I still can't believe that because February was a very slow reading month. In March I participated in Middle Grade March Caritathon and I finished up actually I think the majority of my library books. I might only have a couple left but let's just get into it because I'm excited to share with you all of these books. If you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and feel free to hit subscribe and let's get into the video. The first book I read was The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary and this was for the challenge to read a book older than you and this is 29 years older than me. Beverly Cleary has always been my favorite author since I was a kid. In school I would go to the library and always pick up her books so she holds a special place in my heart. This book has a memory attached to it. In high school I volunteered in a third grade class and I actually read them this book. While I was reading I couldn't remember like I didn't have any familiarity or anything but this was such a cute story and I really enjoyed learning why she wrote this. She wrote it inspired by something that happened to her kids. It is about Ralph Mouse and he lives in a hotel with his family and there is a kid who is staying at the hotel and he has a toy motorcycle. Ralph really likes it. He befriends the kid and it was just so cute. What I really enjoyed about it and what I enjoy about Beverly Cleary is that one she's a great kids writer. She writes kids very well and I just love how she brings all of the characters to life. This mouse and his family had a whole history and personalities and it was just so fun. My cat actually caught a mouse during the time I was reading this so it was very timely but I really had to use my imagination in this book which I really enjoyed and I was just pleasantly surprised. I just love Beverly Cleary and it was a fun read and now I want to collect all of her books so wait till you see my next book haul because I am in the process of collecting her books. <laughs> next for the challenge to read a book with an Asian main character I read When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller and oh my god this book was incredible and I was crying so much. I actually read this in one sitting. One day after work I just took the whole evening to read it and it was a really good time. I really enjoyed this. I I don't even know how to describe it. I just want to recommend it but it was a really sad book. This is about a Korean American girl Lily and she is going to visit her Harmony with her mom and her sister and they're going to stay with her because she is sick. But the root of the story is that Lily is moving to a new town. She is shy and she is seeing tigers. This book is really rooted in Korean folklore and one day when they're driving to her Harmony's house she sees a tiger but nobody else around her can see it. So she kind of has this special power but it is so much bigger than that. I don't even want to say too much about this book because it was just phenomenal and I feel like it is a book that everybody should read but I will point out it is about grief, dementia, and it is just a heartbreaking story but it's so beautiful at the same time. It is very rare for me to read a book in one sitting and this just had my attention fully which is also very rare for me. So I sat down and I just sped through the whole book and it was amazing. It's addicting. It's sad but it was a great read and I highly recommend it. Then I read Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Galley which was the February pick for my Patreon book club. This is a bi-monthly book club I run on Patreon and every other month we read an LGBTQ plus book but we're reading The Rainbow so February's book was read and April is going to be orange and so forth. I have a whole video explaining it. I'll have it linked up above but I really enjoyed this and so did a lot of my patrons. It was a novella but it was western. It had non-binary rep and sapphic rep and it was just great. I really enjoyed it. My only little problem was that I really wish it would have been 
longer because I feel like it was just too short and that's just the problem with novellas. I would have loved to have seen a whole book of this. I read this book on audio and I really enjoyed the audiobook. I just wish that I would have had a little bit more because I feel like I had some questions that were unresolved and I was a little let down but overall I really enjoyed it. Like I did not hate it whatsoever. I thought it was awesome. This was about a group of queer librarian spies. There is a non-binary character. The author is also non-binary and we also just get to see a lot of queer rep and I just loved it. I thought it was really good. However, my little problem was that I feel like it just kind of wrapped up too quickly and I feel like the library element was glossed over. This is definitely a book that I need to reread because I did read it on audio and there were some things that I did end up missing. So a reread is definitely going to happen. I'm really glad that we picked this one for the first book of the book club because it was really good and just set the tone for the whole year. Then I participated in Koreathon and I actually read When You Trap a Tiger during the week of Koreathon but I also picked up Cook Korean by Robin Ha and I really enjoyed this. It was such an interesting book. This is a comic book cookbook which is the coolest thing and now I want all of my cookbooks to be comic books because it was so cool. In the introduction of this book she mentions that she wants everyone to know how easy Korean food is to make because she did not know this previously but when she was in college she called her mom and she started learning how to cook Korean and this has all of the recipes, it has the origin stories, it has everything and it is just so cool. I really think it is the coolest book that I've ever read. This was such a fun book to read however since it is a cookbook it has recipes so it's not really something that you can just read front to back you know where you're just reading the recipes and all so I did kind of skim when there were recipes unless there was ones that I was interested in. I did enjoy it though because she just talks about all of the different foods and how they're made. It was just really fun to learn all about Korean cooking and what they use and it was just really fun. So yeah I had a lot of fun reading this. It is a comic book cookbook about Korean food. It has recipes. It really dives into the history of Korean cooking and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was such a fun book and I couldn't wait to share it with you. The next book I read was Coming Back by Jesse Zavarsky and this is about queer shapeshifters. I have been getting so many recommendations from Book Riot. I am participating in the Read Harder Challenge this year and I signed up for a newsletter that gives you book recommendations so I'll link it down below if you are interested but Cook Korean was a recommendation from them and so was Coming Back. I really enjoyed this but I'm not a fantasy reader. So I ended up actually reading this during my reading sprints on the 19th and it's a fast read but it's definitely a book that I think I also have to reread. We know me, fantasy and me, we're not friends. <laughs> but I really wanted to read this and it was fun but there were so many problems I had where I was just confused and it just felt rushed. So I did enjoy this but I thought that it was just rushed. There were so many questions I had by the end of it and I was just kind of left confused and I'm not sure if that's because I'm not a fantasy reader or because I just didn't have a lot of context. So the bulk of the story is about Preet and Velissa. They are a couple and their town is attacked and Velissa ends up leaving and going on a quest to try and figure out what's happening. And then it gets confusing because it just feels like there's really no I don't know it just doesn't feel like there's really like an end result and I was kind of confused but I still want to recommend it. I'm doing a recommendation video soon and I am going to recommend this because I do recommend it. I think that a lot of people are going to enjoy it. I just think that maybe I wasn't the audience or I just was kind of confused and this is not the genre that I read but I did enjoy it. The illustrations are gorgeous.
But if you want to read about queer shapeshifters, I think you'll really enjoy this. Anyway, I did actually really enjoy this despite the fact that I was confused for some parts, but I do think it's a really solid book and I really enjoyed it. Next, I read another Robin Hall and this was Almost American Girl and oh my god, this was great. I really enjoyed it. It's probably one of my favorite graphic memoirs and I just really enjoyed it. It is about her moving from Korea to Alabama. It is all about ESL and it is about her trying to fit in when she is just pulled from the life that she thought she was going to have. You really get to see how her mother was affected. We get to see how single mothers are treated in Korean culture and they're not treated very well. We just got to see how her mom was trying to have a better life for her, but her as a teenager, she just didn't understand it. It's her trying to fit in and it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. And I read this for the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge the prompt to read a non-fiction YA comic. Next for the Pop Sugar Challenge, I wanted to complete the prompt to read a book with onomatopoeia in the title and I ended up reading Click by Kayla Miller and I really enjoyed this. This was about a girl who I believe is in fourth grade and her friends are going to be in the variety show at her school. It's like a talent show but when all of her friends start grouping up and not asking her to be in the groups, She's really confused and just kind of contemplating and reevaluating her friendships and learning about real friendships. And I thought that it was so relatable. I would have loved to have this as a kid. And I think it's such an important book and message for kids because as you are entering middle school, this is going to happen. You're going to distance from friends. It just happens. I thought this was such an important book for kids and one I could actually relate to because she says that she feels like the outsider in her friend groups or kind of like the third wheel where there's everybody in the group but she's just confused why they're not asking her. But the end result was awesome and I just really enjoyed that she had an adult figure in her life to kind of tell her that she can be different and she doesn't have to follow what all of her friends are doing. And I just thought it was really good. I'm excited to read more of her books. This was a graphic novel and I really enjoyed it. Then in one sitting, I read Ain't Burned All the Right by Jason Reynolds and Jason Griffin. Jason wrote this with his college friend Jason, which was really funny, but this was so amazing. I saw this on Instagram and I didn't even know he had a book coming out, but I want to own this immediately because it is just such an experience. It has his poetry, so he wrote a poem and his friend Jason Griffin did the illustrations and it was just like a beautiful book. I read this from my library on Overdrive but I want to read it as a physical book because I just feel like reading it digitally does not do it justice. So I really want to read it physically because it was just so cool. It was just very creative and artistic. It was just so cool. This was written during the pandemic and the rise of Black Lives Matter and George Floyd's murder. And so this does talk about just everything that he is seeing in that moment. And it was just so beautiful. I loved it so much. And that's really all I have to say. It was just gorgeous. And I can't wait to read it physically and just own it because it is a work of art. <laughs> Then I read a arc I got on NetGalley, which I actually did not mean to actually do. Now they do have a withdrawal option, but I wish I would have had that in the time because I wanted to read this anyway. I don't want to take away from Black reviewers, so I am glad that there is like a withdrawal option because sometimes you accidentally request on NetGalley and you can't go back. But this is Swim Team by Johnny Christmas. This is one of my most anticipated releases and I was pleasantly surprised. It is his middle grade debut. This is about a girl named Bree. She moves from New York to Florida with her dad. I've read a lot of books this month with single parents. So Bree moves to this new school. She loves math and puzzles. There are so many great instances of puzzles throughout the book and I really enjoyed how that was incorporated. She really wants to be in the math puzzles class, but it's full and she has to enroll in swim 101. But here's the catch. She cannot swim and she has anxiety and just the way the anxiety was represented. It was so cool because she is just 
swarmed with all of these invasive thoughts and just the way it was illustrated was really cool. So she can't swim and she's trying to avoid it as much as possible like anybody with anxiety would but her neighbor actually was a swimmer and so she ended up teaching her. The book also incorporates black history and the history of swimming and segregation. I just enjoyed that we got to see a black girl love swimming and actually it made me think back to my childhood because I was actually a swimmer. Was I a good swimmer? Oh no. I was actually like afraid of it a lot of the time. I was just a very anxious kid and didn't want any of that. <laughs> so I actually was on the swim team for like maybe like a couple months or maybe like a whole year or something like that. I was never good. I did not enjoy it at all but it did just take me back to those memories which was really nice. So since I do talk about sports books on this channel I really enjoyed this and if you are interested I'll have a link down below for where you can pick it up because it was really good and I really enjoyed it. But take my review with a grain of salt because I am not black and you should be listening to black reviewers over me. But if you want to read a book about swimming I really enjoyed this one and thought it was really good. The irony. <laughs> I read another book about swimming and this was Obi is Man Enough by Skylar Bellar. It is about a Korean American trans boy who is a swimmer. So I was just thinking about swimming <laughs> this month. <laughs> so I actually read this in my video where I had Instagram control my queer weekend. It was a weekend reading vlog. I'll have it up above if you want to watch it and just hear my thoughts on the book more but oh I loved this so much. I loved it a lot. Obi has recently come out as trans and his swim coach kicks him off the team for being trans. There is transphobia that he deals with so trigger warning for that but it is a heavy read but it also is interspersed with a lot of trans joy and it made me really happy. I really enjoyed it and we all know that I love trans sports stories so it was inevitable that I was going to love this but I didn't know I was going to love it this much. Then the last two books I read were Middle Grade and I read Too Bright to See by Kyla Lukoff and I sobbed at this book. I was ugly crying so much that it wasn't even funny. Like I I, <laughs> I had trouble finishing this because it was so amazing. This is about Bug. He is a trans boy and it is about him just learning about his identity and coming out and it was so good. I could, I could just cry thinking about it because it was just so good. I just loved everything about this. Bug is going into middle school and he just doesn't know who he is. He is around all of the girls that he is friends with and he just doesn't feel like he's one of them and it was just so great. Like honestly trans kids and just trans people in general are going to love this book so much. The way that it writes gender dysphoria and describes it is so good. It talks all about how he doesn't want to look in mirrors and how he is just kind of thinking of himself as a girl in a story rather than as somebody else and oh my god it was just so good. I loved it so much like please everybody pick this one up because it was amazing. And last I read Fast Pitch by Nick Stone and I've been wanting to pick this up because when it was first announced the author mentioned that she loves The Sandlot and this was inspired by it and if you are a fan of The Sandlot you are going to love this book. It is about a girl named Shanice and she is on a softball team and guess what? I also played softball. <laughs> was I very good at it? No. I was afraid of the ball a lot of the time. I was very anxious <laughs> and it's very ironic because I love sports but now that I'm older I wouldn't be as afraid of them but I was afraid as a kid and this also just took me back to those memories. So Shanice is on an all-girls black softball team and talks about racism in sports and especially in baseball and just about how she really has to fight for herself and it was so good. Nick Stone is just amazing so I knew this was going to be great but as a Sandlot lover like that's my favorite movie of all time I just was so obsessed with this. Uh, so this is also following a mystery. So Shanice is 
told about her great grampy John John and about how he was wrongfully accused of a crime and he was kicked out of the MLB. And so she ends up meeting her uncle Jack, who is his brother, and he tells her a lot of the story. But the little problem is that he has dementia and he's sick and so he is not really all there. And oh my god it was so heartbreaking <laughs> but it was so good. I just love the way that she incorporated the Sandlot and I really enjoyed this. It was so good. So if you want to read a sports middle grade that is going to be easy to read in one sitting because it's under 200 pages, I loved this so much. And so yeah, I feel like we don't see a lot of books about softball. So if you want to read this one and you like The Sandlot, I would recommend it. And that is it. Those are all the books I read in March. Let me know what you read, what your favorite book was, and if you've read any of these books, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more bookish things from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks. And I also have a podcast called Reader Rambles. Episodes go out every Monday. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye!